and welcome to uh, the, the webinar. So uh, I'm Ante Olaswit, I'm in charge of the human computer interaction major at Aalto University. I'm really happy to be here. It's the first webinar that I do in this, this uh, role. And I have put together a presentation that goes over um, the, the contents and uh, the requirements and some opportunities that we have. And, and overall, just gives a flavor of, of how we think and, and um, approach teaching here. Um, if you have questions, I, I guess we're going to be taking them after the talk. So um, please, uh, meanwhile, of course, you can put them into chat. We'll be moderating a, a Q&A after that. Um, Berto couldn't make it today, but he's my deputy. So he's an associate professor of game AI and game design at Alta School of uh, Sciences and Alta School of Arts. He's jointly um, uh, appointed between these two schools. Uh, I'm at the School of Electrical Engineering. And as you see, we were hosting this program together uh, with these uh, two schools, uh, Ski and, and ELEC. And I'm uh, in charge of the user interfaces group. Uh, if you're interested in what we do, uh, you, can, you can look at our page. I'll just put the uh, link here, but from now on, I'm, I'm going to be talking about the, the program and the major. So um, first of all, I'll, I'll go through all the universities, just you know who we are and uh, what's our uh, mode of operation and, and what's our mission and vision. And then I'm going to talk about uh, the major and how that's con constructed and what kind of um, courses you will be facing if you, if you come here and what kind of opportunities you will be having um, during the courses and, and of course after that. Um, first of all, a couple of words about Aalto. So Aalto was formed roughly about 10 years ago, um, and um, it had this mission of breaking boundaries that you, you would normally have uh, if you think about universities and their departments and faculties and, and, and so on, and try to have uh, a constellation and, uh, that, that, that can address some, some of the societally important challenges like uh, sustainability and, and creativity in, in novel ways. And uh, here you see a, a timeline of um, where the different universities come from that came together to become Alt University roughly, roughly 10, year, 10, 10 years ago. And um, one, one of the things that we're really proud of is, is our internationality. So uh, maybe Hanne, Hanne knows the statistics better that we have a strong uh, contribution from uh, uh, in, you know, international students and, and research faculty as well. Um, I can't remember the exact proportions, but we're talking about 30-40% across the board. That are the figures I cannot remember then exactly, but yeah, we are one of the most uh, international universities in Europe. So yeah. and that's really visible because we've been also growing our attractiveness in terms of students. And, and, and the research faculty intake. So, so you see that uh, whenever we open anything there, we get uh, you know, lots of different, uh, lots of applications around the world. And that has uh, helped us sort of ramp up the quality of everything that we do here. And um, you know, par partially that's because um, of, of the mission that we have that people find very, very um, inspiring. The other thing that I, I wanna raise up is our startup scene, uh, which is also really strong. Um, you know, around the campus that we have in um, in, uh, in Espo, um, if you if you look at two two kilometer diameter, uh, somebody said that we have roughly one hundred uh, companies there. In addition, we have uh, events like Slash and lots of uh, uh, business um, uh, incubators and so on. And you know, students have lots of opportunities to join these startups if they're interested in those. Um, so it's more more than just a degree. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an experience and also there's very lively communities that are formed around uh, students and, and uh, uh, international visitors and, and, and so on. And of course that has been on a bit of a hiatus because of the COVID, but now we're, uh, I think we're, we're approaching status quo uh, soon. Uh, there are many rankings and all universities will, will show you similar rankings that they, where they're excelling, but something that I really want to uh, emphasize here that I'm, I'm very proud of is that we're, um, you know, one of the, the best young universities. And remember that we were just established uh, around 11 years ago, and uh, you know we're we're ranked as number nine uh, among young universities globally. We're also very good in multidisciplinary and collaborative research, which is uh, you know part of the student experience as well, as I'm going to show. Uh, the particular subject, which is human computer interaction, is also highly ranked. I'll, I'll show you some, some data on that later. 
So you can you can be sure when, when you join Alda, you will be uh, uh, resting on on uh, state of the art research and, and activities. Uh, something that's also really nice uh, is that we have a really uh, beautiful campus. It's it's in a bay. Uh, there's a bird reserve area and lots of forests. It's really walkable. There's still a, a lively uh, center part, which is just built around a metro station and a, and a mall, which is also quite new development. So uh, it is easily reached and it's also having all of the services and lots of restaurants and stuff like that. And we've been building that uh, campus with the idea of increasing sustainability. Good. Um, I don't know if you know much about Finland, but uh, Finland has been systematically ranked as one of the top countries when it comes to uh, happiness and safety and, and social, social uh, uh, welfare. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a really safe place to live and it's, uh, it, there's a lot of nature and, uh, you know, the, most Finns speak uh, English uh, fluently, so you, you'll find it easy, easy to, to get around here especially in Helsinki metropolitan area where there even the, the mayor was suggesting that we should we should add English as, a, as an official language and he wasn't joking so maybe one day we'll have that. Um, let's then talk about the program. So there's a bigger program called computer communication and information sciences so that's CCIS for short and underneath that umbrella there are many majors and human computer interaction is one of them. And human computer interaction is a multidisciplinary field that is that is taking contributions from computer science, electrical engineering, uh, also psychology and social sciences and, and design. And we try to bring all of those elements in, into our education. But nonetheless, we have chosen a, a technical focus, and I'm going to talk about that later. So we want to ensure that our students are not, uh, you know, just getting a generalist education in HCI, but they have sort of a sharp edge in their teaching that allows them to, to land uh, uh, you know, very good jobs. So I'll talk about that um, in, in a minute. So why HCI? If you think about ICT as a whole, I mean, it's the, the driving force in many, many ways at the moment. And uh, nowadays, if you think about uh, you know, networking and computing resources and all those magnificent, magnificent technical capabilities, you know, they have made almost anything possible. And the question is, what should we do with this technology? And that, that's where human centeredness uh, becomes into the picture. And, and human computer interaction is, uh, is, is a big field within uh, uh, computer science and, and information technology. And uh, this is a program to, to be introduced to that, that, that field. Um, I, um, we've been building this program or this major over uh, a few years now. and um, one design principle has been that we would like to offer a very close contact with uh, research. And that basically means that we have uh, you know, smaller studio-like courses and also research project courses. And we offer a lot of possibilities in terms of doing thesis work uh, with, with the groups. And uh, we're, I'm going to show a picture gallery of all of us there, uh, all the professors. And um, but you see that we're, we're quite big uh, as it, when it comes to human computer interaction, and, and we're also very successful when it comes to research. And uh, this is starting to be recognized also internationally. Um, we have um, uh, been ranked as number two in Europe and number 15 in the world, and we're the best in, in Nordic countries. So if you want to come here and study HCI, then I think we're, we have a pretty good offering in terms of uh, you know, world class uh, research. Um, and that's also shown in the, the facilities and laboratories that we, we have here in, in our disposal. Uh, for example, just in a previous period, we, we were teaching a user research. And as part of that, then the students were taken to our lab to, to look at them and work with the eye tracking technology. In, in, in those labs, we have a multitude of other technologies as well. You know, we have uh, dedicated labs for VR and AR technology. Uh, then we have in, in our lab, we have uh, methods and techniques for empirical studies, including eye trackers and motion trackers and, and, and whatnot. And then there are some other people who do like uh, uh, fabrication, like with 3D printing. And, and, and uh, you know, so you will find all of those elements here. Um, then I want to talk more about our uh, specialization here, which is, which is you know, technical human computer interaction, especially applying computational and engineering principles 
into the design and engineering of, of interfaces and, and, and interactive AI. And uh, there's one particular area called creative technologies that, that's uh, becoming more and more central in everything that we do. And I want to show you a small video reel uh, uh, capturing many of these ideas. It's quite short, um, but it gives a very nice overview of the kind of work that we do. This is called an augmented climbing wall at Bertheim and These are These are AI-generated faces. And here you see a motion synthesis that is based on AI that helps to design better climbing uh, walls. Uh, here you see uh, animation, um, games that, that use the body. Um, here you see VR technologies and interaction techniques. Um, This is more, more games that are physically based or exit games. And there's also, uh, we have a professor who's, who's working on, on interactive music te technology. This is some stuff from our lab. We do models of, of human behavior and use them in computational design. And also we help the French uh, uh, nation to adopt a new standard for the keyboards that was designed uh, in, in our lab. So this, this, is an, this is a reel of some of the stuff that, that we're uh, doing here at our University and, and we, uh, we want to offer our students the possibility of learning those, those technologies and, and just actually to be very concrete tomorrow I'm going to be teaching about one of those things that, that was visible in the videos so that there's this, I, uh, this typing video and I'm going to talk about cognitive modeling uh, in the context of our computational HCI class. Um, Okay, um, a couple of more examples just to give you, you know, a concrete idea of what kind of things you will master after taking this program. Um, we use AI methods like deep learning, reinforcement learning, uh, computational simulation to generate uh, human-like behavior. So then they use that as, as a model to understand and improve tasks and, and, and designs. For example, now how would you improve uh, a text entry uh, method or intelligent text entry system. You need to understand some, something about how people move their eyes and hands and make strategic decisions on, on how to type. Uh, we are, you, you will also learn about computational design, which is something that helps uh, designers uh, produce uh, better designs, improve their productivity, improve their creativity. These are actual uh, examples of, of this is an ex actual example where our student has been involved in doing a, a, a plugin for designers that helps designers fix issues with, with, uh, with guideline violations in their, in their capital interface designs. Another student project is here on the right. Uh, we've been working with a smartwatch um, producer or manufacturer that, that, that who was interested in having a gesture recognizer that's actually good for real use or robust enough. And then we worked on deep learning based gesture recognizers and collecting really impressive data set to train that and, and help them improve their, their robustness. Another slide of examples uh, here is the work by Perto Hamalainen where they, they work with uh, Rovio to do automated game level testing. So in, in the future, uh, you, you're not necessarily running expensive empirical studies, but using these AI models of people, uh, maybe AI models of gamers in this case, uh, to evaluate and, and design, uh, for example, game levels. Uh, so what, you, what happens here is that then, uh, you know, they give a game, game level to an AI robot or bot that is then trained to, to solve the game levels. And then they get indices of things like, well, how difficult these levels are or how quickly they would jump out of the game or, and, and do something else so, and so on. What we also do is we work uh, with AI to improve experimentation with human subjects. Um, just actually next week, uh, you know, my, my PhD student is going to teach our students how to do Bayesian optimization based experimentation that makes experimentation way more efficient than it ever used to be. I already showed that this example uh, in the video reel about the keyboards. Uh, we teach methods that, that help uh, or can, can solve some really hard design problems. For example, how to uh, uh, assign uh, characters or letters onto a keyboard, or how to how to do a menu or a web page, or or an interaction technique that is optimal for for, for your users. So we we're learning also those methods. So this is giving a uh, an overview of some of the you know sharp end of of you know what you can learn here, uh, but it's you know 
by no means limited to what you just saw. And let me actually talk about the broader offering that we have. Um, so I'm, I'm here, the professor of interfaces, and then we have um, a, a large number of other people who are involved in our, our, our teaching. Uh, Elisa Meckler is a professor uh, who came uh, from, from Switzerland and she has a background in psychology and she's interested in and studying uh, motivation and experience. So basically what keeps a gamer uh, motivated and, and, and uh, sustain uh, gaming works. So that's, that's one of the questions. I already showed some of the work that Berto has been doing. Then we have a new professor who joined from uh, Rutgers University in the US, uh, Janne Lindqvist. He, he studies the question of how to make systems that are both usable and uh, secure. Uh, that's, that's an interesting area of usable security that is a very timely topic right now. Uh, and then we are also were joined by a new professor of practice, uh, Anitin Soni, who's, who's looking at uh, human-centered design. And he's offering, for example, a, a very timely course on uh, designing for crises. So he was literally looking at, you know, how can design alleviate some of the issues that we have with COVID? And, and he's been holding this uh, for two times now, the seminar. And we're also working with uh, the Alto, Alto School of Arts. And then we have our colleagues, Andres Lucero, and, uh, and, and, and Birpi Roto, and we've been uh, deepening our collaboration with them. So we try to offer more possibilities for our students to take their courses, but also um, their students to take our courses so that they, they would uh, mix and mingle a little bit. Concretely, uh, we're now offering uh, our students the possibility of taking a, a course on collaborative design, which is one of the highlights of our Alta School of Arts uh, research. Uh, we're also organizing a computational design seminar with Alto Arts uh, in, in, the, in the fall. Then we also have um, contributions from the AI folks here at, at Helsinki, which is a really strong uh, program as well. We have uh, something like 16 professors in AI and machine learning, and uh, we have been taking some key courses uh, from their offerings uh, and, and made them possible, made them uh, available for our students. And we have professor of practice uh, Johanna uh, Kaipio, I think she's now Johanna Vitanen, and, and her topic is uh, healthcare systems usability. And then Marko Nieminen, who's uh, uh, in charge of the strategic usability. So basically how to um, strategically uh, organize uh, and, and manage um, activities in companies, uh, targeting usability and user experience. So at the, you're going to get a, a higher level uh, uh, perspective to HCI from, from, from his courses. So this is a gallery of, of, of us, and, and of course, we also have a lecturers here, um, uh, Antti Salavara and Mika Niemin and, and, and many other ones. And, and one of the design principles of the whole um, major has been that we would like to offer a lot of possibilities for you to choose courses. This is quite unique. I mean, many other programs are that they, they move like a train and have no, no degree of freedom. And uh, what we, we'd like to do is that, okay, well, you can propose your own uh, specialization, right? Uh, we, we make certain courses available and sort of recommended, but you can go around that if you wanna, let's say that you, you're interested in brain computer interfaces. Okay, well, let, let's talk how you, can, how you can specialize in that one. You know, maybe you would go to take some of the courses that we have in neurosciences and brain imaging, and maybe some of the courses that we have in uh, you know, like uh, sensors and measurement in the electrical engineering school, and maybe some machine learning uh, um, contributions as well. And, and you know, by this kind of work, then then we'd like to help you to to specialize in a way that you you find interesting. And you see here a big portfolio of some of the ACI related topics that we have at Alto that uh, you know surprisingly can have uh, you know even the school of chemical engineering uh, they they have for example. Uh, computational design courses they on you know they don't really do design like we do but they focus for example the design the design of um, of materials and uh, but nonetheless you know it would teach you some some basics of of computational design in in, in from a methodological perspective that can be applied in, in many places and then we have also a school of business and uh, a school of uh, engineering that also have been offering related things like on product design and engineering design and um, but much of the stuff focuses on School of Electrical Engineering and School of Science. And there we have uh, three world leading spearhead areas. So there's the computational design that I, I briefly showed, uh, interactive machine learning, so how to, how to learn uh, human in the loop and make systems uh, 
operate like that. And then the other area is, is the game design and, and game AI that I, I showed, uh, that is represented by Elisa Meckler and Alberto Hamelai. But as you see, we also have uh, people offering courses and uh, doing research in the area of VR and AR that are very important at the moment. And we're also building a new uh, world-class facility of 25 million euros uh, called Alta Studios, which will be a physical space with lots of different labs uh, that are equipped with um, with state-of-the-art uh, equipment uh, in VR and AR. So, you know, this is a, a portfolio of some of the stuff that we can offer to you when you when you get to the stage of uh, picking uh, the, the specializations. Of course, you don't get to do that immediately. The, the, the point of the, uh, another design principle has been that uh, you first learn certain core things so that you're then ready you know, to specialize with and you're equipped with the necessary knowledge to do that. And uh, some of the, the common courses uh, you can see here. And um, as you see here, uh, there's an important um, sentence there at top, so which is that you, know, you, you can pick a selection of these courses, let's say 35 if you're doing the long major or 25 if, you, if you're doing the shorter major. And you, you pick among courses like, well, social media or human factors or use interface technologies or emerging technologies and, and um, and then, uh, you know, that, that's going to give you a bit of uh, control over the direction that you want to take, but without compromising um, the, the core that you need to have in order to, to specialize later on. Um, this is being updated for next year, so we're going to have more, uh, uh, some changes here, for example, in terms of security engineering and um, this co-design course that I mentioned from other arts and, and, and some other changes as well. Okay, and after that, then, then you're going to have to uh, choose how to specialize. And as I said, there's this uh, very large buffet of, of courses that you can take across all the university. And, um, um, you know, I, I just listed some areas that are ACO related that have been um, picked by our students over the years. So just, just to give you some sampling, uh, we, we have some uh, offerings in web technology. And if you want to focus on like interactive web then you would pick our courses on like interface construction and web technology and uh, maybe user uh, evaluation and user research and that you know that would form a nice package for you to then have uh, a specialization in web technology similarly we have uh, offerings in the school of electrical engineering on, on speech recognition technology and natural language processing so we'd pick something from there and combine that with our computational hci course and you know that allow you then to build interactive uh, systems that operate via speech or voice. We have uh, a robotics professor Ville at Elec. We have an AR and VR competencies at both Ski and Elec, and related to, uh, professors and classes, uh, and so on and so forth. Right, so you get the sense that um, you know there, there's lots of possibilities to, to to pick and mix the way way you would like. So that how, how this practically goes is that then. At some point, you're asked to do your own study plan, and that study plan is then reviewed by me or whoever happens to be in charge of the program. Um, and, and then you get feedback and, and ideas on how to how to pick the, the best courses. So we want our students to have you know, some challenging courses and, and also them, you know, thematical orientation that makes them uh, recruitable so that they, they can enter in the next stage after, after getting the degree. Good. Um, this is an overall structure of the study. So uh, there's going to be the, the common courses that I showed, specialization as part of the major, and then there's possibility for elective studies. Uh, you can pick also out, completely outside of the, the major itself. Maybe you do want to do something in, in like uh, entrepreneurship or uh, the arts. Uh, they have some excellent um, in, interaction design courses or I don't know, graphic design courses and pick, pick some of them. And, and then, of course, we have master's thesis, um, which, which is a, a big part of, of, of the, the, the study. So it's about half a year. And uh, I'll talk more about master's thesis in a, in a minute. Um, so after your, your degree, um, there, there are many opportunities in, in, in staying in Finland and also during your studies to get uh, contact points with the, with the Finnish ICT industry. Uh, we have really strong uh, ICT, games, and service industries right here in the capital region. Um, we, and we work really closely with the industry. Uh, so we have industry directly funding us. And um, 
you know, it's just maybe a concrete example. So, so just, just yesterday, uh, Porsche, uh, the car manufacturer, they contacted us and they want to collaborate with us on designing, um, you know, some, some new dashboards. And, you know, maybe that then leads to a master thesis position that we can offer to our students. Um, you know, similar opportunities are then announced uh, on our um, internal communication channels where, where students are invited. And, you know, we post the job uh, offerings there. We also have lots of uh, internet internship positions uh, internally, and, and we also encourage to take internships outside. And, uh, you know, we write letters to our students that then help them to land those positions. Um, and we also have very strong uh, telecommunications industry that I, I particularly want, want to men mention. So in addition to the startup uh, community, we have uh, Ericsson and Nokia. And they're always looking for, for talent, also in, in human computer direction. OK, um, well, if you're not interested in industry career, but you ra rather want to do a, a research career, uh, which I you know, strongly recommend considering, uh, we, we do have a new system called the doctoral track. And the HCI major is part of that. Doctoral track um, is not um, something that uh, you, you, you must take in order to become a PhD student. Um, but it's something that if, if you have already decided no, you know, then you can apply for this. And that there's a special uh, system where you would be doing some uh, research gigs as a research assistant in, in close collaboration with four uh, different professors and teams uh, during the track. So right now there's one student in the track uh, because we just started last year and she's doing the, the, the last, um, I think she's doing the last um, uh, gig this, this year actually next year and then she's starting the master's, master's thesis um you know we were proud that our our uh, master's students are also recruited around the world to phd uh, studies you know i i have uh, very positive experiences of our students going to top places in the world um eth zurich and epfl and uh, university of copenhagen and they all have uh, have our students and we support strongly uh, ambitious students who want to go and, and be, do the PhD, even if they don't necessarily do that, do, do those with us. Um, maybe with that, uh, we could turn over to Katya, uh, who was kind enough to give a sort of student point of view. Uh, yeah, hello everyone. My name is Katya and currently I'm doing my second year of studies in the program Human Computer Interaction. And uh, to start with, my journey with Alta University began even before my studies. I, uh, was a I, I was a research assistant for a summer internship in 2019. And uh, to be honest, it was a crucial period for my decision where I want to go to my bachelor's. So I applied for the, master, for the master's in Alta and I was accepted and it was a very happy moment for me. And uh, Currently, I'm finishing my studies to start writing master thesis in the second semester of this year. And uh, speaking about my experience, I switched to beat my domain of interest. For the bachelor's, I studied social sciences and social informatics, but my master's program here is a little bit more technical. Uh, I'm doing a one major in human computer interaction, and also I do a minor in data analysis and data science. Um, and it really fascinates me how Alta University provides, provides opportunities to try different things, to learn more about the spheres that really interest you. So currently during these two years, I tried working with some, uh, with some industry cases, for example, as Antti told about the course on collaborative evaluation there with a bunch of other students, we tried to improve site website of the Finnish health uh, ministry with like regarding uh, the COVID stuff. And it was a practical case that was really interesting to try, but also there are a bunch of uh, academic opportunities. Like I'm a research assistant in the user interfaces lab. And throughout the two years, I tried different spheres and I worked with different people there. And it is also really helpful to shape your mind and understand what really what is really interesting for you and what do you want to do after the studies but life in alta university is not only studies we do have a lot of activities for students there is a very strong 
culture of like student life here. And for example, myself, I'm living on the campus. Like we have a lot of dormitories, which are very close to all the study buildings. And here we can like even like walk, walk around or also we do have a lot of different activities like dance clubs or like theater study, student theater, sports club and so on and so forth. So it is always a bunch of opportunities to do something. And now when the like COVID situation is getting better, there are a lot of more and more things you can do around the campus. And uh, speaking about life of life in Finland, it's really calm and very, very safe for like from the student's perspective. And uh, I can really say that it is a, a great opportunity to to live and to study like um, so yeah from me it was the mostly positive experience and I'm really helpful I'm really happy with the decisions I made a couple of years ago so that as I'm in the place I feel like I should be right now thanks Katya and um can you say something about your master's thesis or did you already agree on, uh, on the topic? Because that's, that's super cool. Yeah. Uh, right now, I don't have my exact topic yet because I started the position just a couple of days ago. Uh, but where we're speaking about the design.ai project, which is suppo supposed to help designers in their work, we're speaking about the plugin for such tools as Figma or Sketch. Where a lot of where a lot of technical details requires a lot of attention from the designer, but with the help of the plugin, some features can be automized, like layouts, transformation, or changing color palettes. So the goal is actually make people's life easier, and I appreciate this so much because it is cool to see the results of your work. And yeah, this is really great. Thanks, Katya. I, I, I forgot to mention that I, I think most of our master's thesis positions are paid. So whether you do that in industry or within uh, our groups, uh, you get salary for that. And normally uh, what students do is that they take either TA, so teaching assistant position that is also paid, or research assistant position that is also paid, and then they follow up with a, with a master's thesis at, at some point in, in a group. So. If you're looking for, you know, like sustaining your living here, uh, you know, that's nice uh, side income for you as well. Okay, um, good. Uh, maybe, Hanna, I don't know if you want to say something about student life, which, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of contact to, but, but there, there's a very strong student union. Uh, we have housing services and support. Uh, we have a, a good healthcare system for students and, and also I would say excellent facilities for sports because they're, they're the old uh, Olympic facilities that have been developed from the 1954 when the Olympics were here uh, in, in Helsinki. And uh, you know, so we have big hall uh, practically with lots of different facilities for, for students. I don't know, Hanne, if you want to add something on this. Um, I think that was quite good, but just to remind everyone that we have housing around the campus as as Katya already mentioned that she's living, living actually there. And then we have the sense of community. The AYY is a big organization which gathers all the students at Aldo. So you always find help or uh, friends to do something. And we try to really take care of you. Also, you know, means of healthcare, which is provided for the students. So there are links to read more about, but we will try to take care of all of our students. Thanks, Anna. I just want to add that now that the, the COVID pandemia is over, we can also go back to the regular cycle of, of celebrations, which uh, I, I think is uh, it's worth mentioning that uh, we have the May Day celebration, 1st of, of uh, May, which is a, a big student event, basically. So all the, the students, the former students, they put on their caps and they go and have fun. So, and then there will be lots of activities around that, that time on the campus related to that. Okie dokie, um, maybe Hanne, do you want to say some words about admission? I think it's really well explained on the page, but if there's something special you want to mention. Yeah, so 
actually the, the this year's application period is, is coming really soon. It starts in two weeks. Uh, it will start on 1st of December and it will end on 3rd of January. So that is the master's application period is this year. And we have master's application period always once a year at the end of the year. Um, so there's the web link we, you can see, and please check carefully all the application instructions from there. There's also information about scholarships and tuition fees that we offer, and then all the general admission requirements. Please remember to check the Aalto University's general admission requirements, and then what this human computer interaction program has itself. So that is the info I re recommend you to check really carefully when you are apply and we are waiting for your applications. Thanks, Hanne. And I, I think it makes sense to tell your story in the letter of motivation. You know, why do you want to start, study HCI and what sort of drives you and what kind of things you, you might build on from the previous education that, that you want to bring here? I think Katja is an excellent example of, you know, bringing something completely different like social sciences here and, and doing something interesting with that. Okay, um, we are now ready to take your questions. And uh, Hanne, maybe you have been keeping track of the questions and can you pick some questions? Okay, I think the first one over here is that will a bachelor's degree in H, uh, HI, how do you say the acronym? Human computer interaction, how it will raise my chances to get accepted in, com in comparison to computer science degrees. So, which kind of background do you prefer, Antti? Um, in comparison to, to get accepted to, to what will a bachelor's in HCI? Oh, yeah, you know, HCI is fine. Uh, we would like to have people who have some computer science because much of our teaching focuses on it uh, on, on, or uses computer science, let's, let's put it like that. So, if you have a course on uh, minimum, you should have something on programming, ideally, something on like algorithms and you know, systems and, and so on. Um, you know, that's going to make your life easier. Um, that's not a hard requirement, but that would be beneficial to have. Uh, then there's a question. Um, I will not be able to start a master until November 2022, and the master starts in September. Is this going to be a big problem if I start late? Um, it, it will be a bit of a problem because many of the orientations and first things that they need to start in September, and then we have the first period, uh, you know, which is going to be quite packed. We, for example, have the user research course then and then many other ones. Um, if uh, teaching will be organized in hybrid mode or remotely, then of course, you know, maybe you can participate in part of those. But I, I would recommend, uh, you know, coming in in September, meet the other students and, and so on. So I'm saying that it's possible to do it in a way that you propose know, here, so starting in November, then you know, you're certainly going to miss something. I would say that we, our university has a lot of orientation when the study is start to help you find new friends and get to know everything. So in that sense, it's also uh, valuable to be here. But but as Antti mentioned, it, it's it's partially possible to start remotely. Uh, then. Um, hi, I am wondering how HCI and Bayesian data analysis can be related in interactive data analysis. Can you suggest some projects to check out later? And Bayesian data analysis is working with pretty arcane tools, you know, building, for example, on R and STAN and, and things like that. And, um, you know, there, there's, there's, there's a big need to develop a Bayesian data analysis itself. Uh, to exploit uh, interactive uh, interaction techniques and uh, in interactive visualizations and so on. And that's something that uh, Aki Vehtari and other ones who are teaching da Bayesian data analysis for, for driving classes of like 400 people that they're keenly looking at. And, and we've been jointly supervising some, some master students, for example, on those topics. Right now, they don't have contact. So if, if, you, if you learn Bayesian data analysis, you get to learn about the theory and uh, sort of the programming aspects of Bayesian data analysis. But if you wanted to do something that connects HCI, you know, then uh, it would be up to some sort of interesting research project maybe, or 
Um, and then, then we also have the, the, the inform, information visualization course where you know, some of those things would come together and we would learn some ways of plotting data in, in interactive and, and powerful ways. So there, there will be some contact points, but, uh, but not a direct course uh, at the intersection of these things. Okay. Well, then we already talked a bit about um, taking part-time jobs. So is there a possibility to participate as a research helper or something similar at all to tackle to the rent? Um, I think Auntie already mentioned that, yes, it is possible. But uh, Katja, could you tell about your experiences as you told us you have, have been working part-time? Uh, yeah, I've been working part-time. Like given my residence permit, I'm allowed to work 25 hours a week, but all my but all of my positions were a bit a bit less, just to be able to manage my studies and work well. Um, and I worked in a user interfaces lab, and I also was a teaching assistant twice for different courses. Uh, as a research assistant, I was uh, like I was helping uh, people from the lab like with mostly with the things I like to do, like information visualization. I was doing a lot of graphs to support like research, but also it was an excellent uh, opportunity to learn something new. Like for example, I worked with the results of eye tracker studies, which I have very little connection to beforehand, or also like during the summer, my, during my summer position this year, I worked with the UC Okanen, who is a, uh, uh, working on uh, like a car model we can simulate a driver and it was a very fascinating topic like i know pretty much nothing about cars but it was so interesting to dive into this field and like to do something once again with my own hands uh there so and there also i know that there are a lot of opportunities to work in different labs and in different like courses and departments so Sometimes it works as just you find a, a person which interests you as a professor and you can write them to ask where, where they are hiring right now. So, yeah. Thanks, Katja, for your experiences. Um, then, is there a chance to get involved in HCI projects before the master's start, as Yekaterina mentioned? If yes, where can I find those? So Katja, where did you find the information? And Antti, do you also have a comment on this? Uh, well, Alta has a summer internship for students, uh, which I was part of. It, I think it is yearly company, so you can apply some, somewhere in the spring, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we every year we get the same, same questions. And, and there are two things that, that are happening. There's the internship programs via which we, we get some, some students and get to know them. There's the, it's called ASCII, uh, so Alta School of Science uh, Summer Internship Program. And we're part of that. So every year we publish some projects and, and students come already in like a June and they, they do that. They're also paid positions, by the way. And um, the other thing is that then we have uh, Alto HCI Education Teams channel. So in Microsoft Teams, Teams application, there's a channel that is dedicated for um, HCI students. We publish our, our job uh, positions, you know, like TA, RA positions there. And also some, sometimes students just email me that, you know, do you have anything? And then typically, or often we have, right? And I kind of guarantee that everybody gets them. But then we, we do have constant, uh, you know, lookout for RAs and TAs. Thanks. Uh, then there are two questions by one participant. First, do you have specific classes about accessibility? Uh, yes and no. So unfortunately, uh, we, we, we did have something on that topic, but that, uh, you know, that, that person left and the course doesn't exist anymore. Um, but we do cover accessibility related things on undedicated courses. So for example, in the introduction to HCI, uh, there's something about it. And then on my course, uh, we talk about visual perception models and we touch on accessibility related things like uh, maybe color blindness or motor deficiency and stuff like that. But it's not systematically covered in our, in our course offerings, unfortunately. Uh, we do have a strategic initiative at Alta University campus to make our uh, campus more accessible and, and there's serious effort to do that. Uh, given that, uh, you know, I'm not seeing that, so I'm not, not, not able to sort of um, to tell, frankly, how good it is, right? So you have to turn to somebody else to, to get an honest opinion on it. 
yeah, that, that was maybe the second half of the question that how do how does all the treat students with disability? So um, inclusion is really important to us. And in in terms of our facilities, we try to make them as accessible as possible. And currently they, we are renovating the campus to improve in that sense. And I think also our studies now making them remote, for example, is, is a part of that making them accessible. But about that, how studies are organized, maybe Antti, do you want to comment that part? Well, I mean, there's no shift toward uh, hybrid and then physical uh, teaching, but some, some, some courses are still in a, in a remote uh, mode. That doesn't mean that that's more accessible, by the way. So I, I don't think Alto has yet got as far as like offering uh, closed captioning, so subtitles to lectures and, and, and things like that. But there's a strategy to, to improving in that respect. And, and uh, I, I think that those people would be very willing to listen to, to suggestions. Okay, it was the, there's more specific that uh, the person is dyslexic person and has some problems with spelling and reading speed. Well, I mean, if you made it as far as uh, getting a bachelor degree in a related area, then uh, most likely you're okay. <laughs> I don't think there's any anything more than that required in our program. Mm. Uh, then let's find the next question. Um, the person is, the, is a software developer with skill set in machine learning and data science. I don't have any HCI or design background. Do I stand any chance to be added, admitted if I apply? Yeah, uh, so this is from uh, Maria. So th this, is, this is a good, good question and I, I would strongly recommend applying because we, we have many uh, students with a similar profile. They, they were you know, doing something in machine learning, data science, computer science, software development. And then they decided that, okay, I want to do something more human centric. And how this works in practice is that then uh, we ask you to take some basic courses. And we have in the very first period, we have introduction to HCI. You know, let's take that course, right? And, and start building from that. Uh, I think it's really, really healthy that we have a good technical core that you can build on because some of the later courses will be technically more involved. On the other hand, if you have, you know, design or HCI background, then you do need to take some of the uh, more technical courses in the beginning so that you prep your way uh, to those um, you know, more challenging master's level courses in, in, in HCI. And I think important over here is to write your motivation on the motivational letter. Why do you want to change your career, for example? Antti, do you have a comment on this? Yeah, ex exactly. And uh, we, every year we accept uh, people who have no uh, ACI background. So please don't take that as a requirement it is beneficial if you've taken something that you know believe me we have pretty good offering in the beginning of the semesters to, to start learning that as well okay then there's a uh, question i haven't completed my bachelor's degree yet if i finish my degree in september while following the lessons is a problem mm. I think one thing is to check the uh, general um, admissions instructions Aldo has. I think they. Well, I, can, I can say that the diploma should be like in the admissions office before you start the classes here. But the classes don't start immediately in September. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I think the strict deadlines are available. Uh, in, on our website, so you can actually check that from there. So our admissions websites will answer to your question. Uh, then, um, what's the admission rate to HCA? Uh, uh, I can't recall the number. I'm, I'm sorry because uh, you know, I'm actually in charge of the, the admission and. Uh, and uh, we, we got, a, I don't know, maybe 100 applications and then we offered something like 15 positions. And maybe that gives you an idea. But, you know, you should not look at the uh, acceptance rate per se, right? Because we get all, you know, all over the world, we get applications these days. And you should just focus on, on making an excellent application yourself. Let's put it like that. 
Um, then I couldn't find any HCI courses in FITEC courses. Not sure if I missed, would really like to get some basics. So are we offering FITEC courses like? Uh, not, not in this major at least. Yeah. I mean, if, if you wanted to do something like that in, in your specialization and combine you know, HCI and FITEC, you know, maybe we can come up with something. I have not had a student before who would like to do that. Mm. And we're open to that. Uh, then I have a background from University of Applied Sciences. Are there any special requirements or extra courses needed to take for people not from university background? Yeah, normally we would recommend some more uh, technical computer science course. For example, we have excellent course courses by uh, Jukka Suomela and Dr. Kasti, who are sort of teaching the, the basics of computer science and not just programming, but computer science as a science. And, and those would be quite, quite recommended. Uh, because you get certain basic concepts there uh, in terms of like how algorithms work and, and, and so on that you can then apply in um, that, that that is somewhat required you know when you when you for example apply optimization or machine learning um, in the way that we do in, in these courses but you know it's um, you know we have had uh, students from Uni university of life sciences uh, and, and we then direct them to take to take some courses like that Okay, I think we have time for a couple of more questions. Anything you wish to ask from Katja, who is our student, or something else? We still have a few minutes left. And thank you so far for the really good questions. Oh, Maria has a question. Um, yeah, the FITEC is, is open university and um, are there any open university courses on, on the topic? On the topic of FITEC, I don't know. On the topic of HCI, I also don't know. Uh, FITEC is the organization, but um, mm -hmm. I think they, they might be a bit more general, the courses over there, and not as special as HEI. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't really know that. Yeah. And then uh, question, uh, what can you tell us about the joint program with EIT Digital for Human Computer Interaction? Yeah, I can, I can tell a lot about that because I'm uh, in charge of the exit year of that program. So it consists of uh, two years, one uh, in, in one site in Europe, that's part of the uh, chain of universities like in Paris or Stockholm. Uh, and the other one here, um, and I'm, I'm in charge of the, the specialization on computational uh, HCI. So, you know, very much similar things that I just showed. Uh, typically, you know, you would start in, in, in September, take a course in user research and computational design, and then uh, starting in January, you would do a master's thesis here in, in Helsinki with a company, typically, and sometimes uh, with, with uh, academic groups as well. We had some really good experiences with the IT students. Uh, they also, you know, it's quite intense because you have to go to two sites, but then again, you know, get uh, pretty uh, good networking uh, out of that and you get uh, quite diverse experiences and typically they, they land uh, good job positions and some of them go to do research positions as well. Uh, so I, I recommend also considering that one. It's, it's, it's a good program. If you are interested in the double degree, which the EIT is, uh, kindly check the admissions period then or the application period because it's a bit different than this one we are talking at the moment so please be, please be specific on that um i think one more question we still have time so thanks so far that, about the questions and anything else And I, I also want to welcome, if you have any questions, just email me or Hanne. Uh, we're happy to help. Yeah, and, and you can also send questions to admissions at alda.fi. So if you have anything about the how to apply, so they also help you with the technical side of applying to our university. 
But if no further questions, so thank you so much for participating and good luck with applying. And we hope to see you here in the campus uh, next fall. Indeed, you. see you soon. And thank you for joining this session and have a nice rest of the week. Thank you.